Wanna talk? So let's talk. Good evening and welcome. It's Talk to Solomon time. That's me, Stan Solomon. I'm back. And still here is... Chief Steve. My illustrious co-host uh, and former, uh, or shall I say last session, uh, host extraordinaire. Did a great job, Steve. All right. We welcome also Greg Howard to the show. Hey, Greg. Good evening. Greg, of course, is our financial expert. That is his profession. He works with individuals and small companies uh, on financial uh, items, and maybe there's no better where to, what better place to start than with the quote-unquote fiscal cliff that is now being talked about, uh, positions taken, uh, postures being uh, shown, posteriors being shown primarily. Uh, but Greg, let's just start with uh, the fiscal cliff. What is it? Well, the fiscal cliff is made up of a number of things. First of all, uh, we have sequestration, which is uh, the issue of if they cannot come up with a certain agree set of agreements, uh, we will have automatic cuts in the federal budget, which will do great harm to our military and other programs that upon which not only does our safety and security as a nation um, re uh, depend, but also a great number of programs that, uh, while we may not want them under a strict constitutional idea, a forced austerity at this moment would be disastrous. Then, of course, we have the rollback of the Bush tax cuts. Well, a lot of people say, whoa, yay, we're going to tax the rich. Well, that tax increase might fund the government, uh, estimates say, anywhere from three to eight days if they raise taxes on the top percent, uh, top 2% of tax earners. So that's really a non-starter. It really does nothing more than punish success in this country. But what the dirty little secret is, is that there are a huge number of tax increases for everybody involved. This involves a doubling of the, uh, well, by cutting the child tax credit, um, people will see their taxes go up all across the income spectrum. You'll see the lowest tax uh, bracket go from 10 to 15 percent. That is a 50 percent increase, and the increases will go all the way up. Now, there are a number of things that also need to be talked about here, uh, not the least of which is people don't understand, in my opinion, and, and Chief can comment on this, and so, and so can you, Greg, that taxes are nothing more and nothing less than taking money from those who make it and giving it to the government so that no matter who you tax, rightly, wrongly, or without concern, at the top, the bottom, in the middle, or, or wherever. It really comes down to this. Every tax proposed, every fee proposed, every anything that generates revenue proposed is a way of taking money from the private sector, if you will, and giving it to the government. And when you take money out of the private sector, there's less money in the private sector. That's not really... You don't have to have a PhD to figure that out. If you have... 100 oranges or 100 million oranges, if you take an orange out of the basket, there are fewer oranges in the basket, right? That is correct, and what it also does is it reduces economic activity because the federal government is not efficient as a means of moving uh, money through an economy. First of all, a great deal of it is used up in waste, abuse, and fraud and unnecessary overhead costs of people simply there whose job it is to decide who gets the money. Whereas uh, the most efficient method of me moving money through an economy is to give the m money to your butcher. Your butcher then takes it over to the grocery market where he buys his Wheaties and his Cheerios and whatever else he needs. The grocer then takes it over to the barber where he buys his haircut. And uh, there's no overhead involved in each of these uh, steps along the way. The money simply pours through the economy in, in what's known as the velocity of money in a healthy economy is very brisk, and the money in changes hands very quickly through a town as each person who gets their paycheck or their profit from their business then goes to the next business in line and spends the money, 
and uh, keeps the process moving because we we live in an interdependent economy. Uh, you can see this in the smallest village all the way up to a global economy. Chief, <clears throat> well, the first thing I would like to find this fiscal cliff and take all the rhino Republicans and pitch them over it because for them to say that they're going to now abandon their promise, their pledge to not raise taxes, is really very immoral. And in my opinion, they, they, they deserve to be pitched over for that reason alone. But also Greg mentioned Absolutely. something Greg mentioned something about uh, taxing the rich and how, what, how, how a small amount of time that, would, their, that additional taxes would use to, to reduce um, the deficit or the budget or whatever it would be. But history has shown us that when taxes are reduced, the government brings in more tax revenue. So all of this is by the Democrats. This is just a means to punish people. It's not a means to really bring in money because you can just look at prior history. You know, past practice has shown when you raise taxes, like the luxury tax that came out in the 70s, it brought in nothing because people didn't, didn't, didn't buy things anymore. So for us to raise taxes is going to bring in less revenue for the government. Reducing will bring in more revenue, and that's where this should go if, if they really need the money. But the problem is spending, not the taxes. Now let me differ with the chief. Yeah, Steve's you... exactly right. Could I just jump on that for one more second? Because right. he mentioned... Uh, something very important. It's called the Laffer Curve, and it was a, a you know, a well-known economist, Art Laffer. You can see him occasionally on Fox Business and Fox News. He comes on the networks. Art Laffer has proven, and it's called the Laffer Curve, and it's a, a simple statistical model that proves that the higher the tax rate, the lower the money that the government will get in terms of overall revenues anyway. Steve is exactly right on this, because you reach a certain point where you begin to stifle an economy because the government takes so much out of it. And by raising the taxes on the wealthiest, you actually reduce the number of jobs that will be created. You'll reduce the, um, the velocity of money through an economy. I have never been given a job in my life by a poor person, and I've never, as a kid, when I was out cutting grass, cut grass for someone on welfare. Well, well said. But let me tell you where I think that uh, I differ with, with Chief. I don't believe the Democrats are doing this to punish the rich. The rich might end up being punished. They're doing this to become the champions of the poor. They're saying, through us, you can, you can do something to those mean people who are rich because they were lucky or they stole it or whatever the heck they want to say. Uh, so they're building not only the dependency of people for what programs they give them, they're building a dependence on the Democrats to be their, their method of getting back at those people who have. Now, the reality is, and I'm going to predict right here on, on this show, on uh, November the 27th, 2012, that before 2013 is up, we will have major rioting. Not because poor people don't have enough, because poor people have had it with rich people having too much. And that's exactly what this is leading up to. Your comments. Who first? You first, Chief. Well, I, I believe you could be very well right because the Obama administration, him, him, Obama in particular, has done nothing but create div, div, division within the American society since he's taken office. He's divided us on every way, shape, and form possible, uh, racially, monetarily, by our religion, by our ethnic groups, by every way, shape, or form. So one more thing to, to push it over the edge, another cliff to go over would be what you're talking about, which could be a big riot against the rich versus the poor. But it, but it looks like to me, it appears to me, that Obama wants to destroy our economic system, tear it all down to pieces, and then start his socialistic empire. Uh, Greg? I, I have to agree. Uh, as a matter of fact, the question came up in the chat room. Uh, maybe this is the intention. They want the U.S. economy to collapse. Um, there's no question that Obama, after you've seen the movie 2016 um, and understood what Dinesh D'Souza was after in the movie, is trying to turn the U.S. into a bleeder of wealth to all the third world countries to level the playing field on a global basis. Obama is a Marxist, and if he can impoverish the U.S., in order to spread the wealth around the world, yes, that's fine. He wants to bring the U.S. economy down to, in order to remake it in his own uh, unholy image that he has in mind. And we've talked about this in the past um, with Bob Chapman and so forth. And you're right that the, uh, the left is trying to be the champion of the poor. Unfortunately, 
as we discussed in the past with Bob Chapman on this show, what they're going to get, unfortunately, is a French-style revolution if the, if the rioting begins. And these wealthy liberals who think that they've been championing the poor and on the right side of the issue on this, they may find themselves in the modern-day version of the guillotine at the hands of these poor people that they tried to champion. So, uh, you know, be careful what you wish for, because it may turn very badly against you. They said Black Friday is the biggest day in history for gun sales. Uh, I'm not surprised. Uh, I believe that the U.N. treaty that would disarm, take away the right to own uh, firearms f by private citizens, which this president uh, is going to try and f get through it with, with the Democrats. If they eliminate the filibuster, they will get it through, although I don't know how they'll get it ratified. Uh, that, that is exactly what they're going to do. They're going to accept it. They're going to start to enforce it, even though it's never been ratified. And uh, we're going to see, I thought we'd see it before now, but I didn't know he already had Roberts in his pocket. Uh, but we're going to see the Supreme Court uh, give our government the right to enforce a treaty that has not been ratified. Wait and see. Well, you're right. No, and then on, on top of that, you know, uh, since Obama has been reelected, when Supreme Court justices retire, he'll replace them with people that will not follow the Constitution, but will follow his ideology and, and allow those things to happen. No question about it. Now, speaking of that, you've got Reed trying to get rid of the quote-unquote filibuster. Actually, his, his idea is to get rid of the filibuster on the procedure votes and then only have a filibuster on the voting on the actual bill. But, of course, that strategy means that all the pressure will be on the Republicans to not filibuster a bill that has been sold by the lapdog media as being, you know, what the people want. Uh, it's outrageous. Uh, I, w I don't know if, you know, the Democrats have no compunction at doing anything, everything, and all things to anything, anyone, and all ones, uh, where the Republicans are busy, as Steve has said, wanting to be called gentlemen. Well, what we need to do is take up a collection and buy a set of balls uh, for the Republicans, for each one, only three or four seem to have any, uh, and that's not enough to, to, to hold the day. Chief? Well, you're right about that. It's, it's amazing to me that uh, here we are in this predicament, but the Republicans are still more content with being called with not, with not being accused of being ungentlemanly than taking care of the people's business. But in this deal with Harry Reid, I want to also remind everybody that when, we, when the stimulus bill was passed and that was into the, in the budget, after that point, Harry Reid refused to create a budget anymore because now they've kept the budget from the stimulus bill time era. So every year there's no budget. This was done on purpose. They've kept that same amount of monies in the budget from that year from the stimulus bill prior so that's why they've not, why Harry Reid has not put a budget forward because they've kept that same amount of... That 25% increase. Increase is still in there year after year after year. And that's become the baseline. So they've increased but, it from there. But Harry Reid was a staunch proponent of, of the filibuster when it worked in his favor. He just wants a one-party system. That's what he wants. They want to control everything. Well, unfortunately, I think they do. Uh, all right, let's, let's talk a bit about the election. It's behind us now. Uh, I believe that the election was, was won through fraud and cheating. Uh, there have been many, many cases of it talked about, many that are not talked about. Uh, Soros bought the company that did a lot of the counting of the ballots. Um, polls show that Romney was ahead, but every single contested state went to Obama. I'm of the opinion this election was stolen, and I'm of the opinion that Americans that accept it are Americans that are not willing to fight for their freedom and therefore will lose it. What's your thought, Greg? Well, of course, the election was fraudulent. Uh, there was no poll ever, except for a couple of hardcore left-leaning polls with very tainted uh, samples that showed Obama over 50% at any point, at any point in the election cycle. Now, all of a sudden, he comes out with 51%. You have counties that voted in excess of 140% of the registered number of voters in those counties. You have voting machines that were changing votes from Romney to Obama right in front of the eyes of the people trying to use those voting machines. The FBI, by the way, is looking into them. I saw an article on that today. Yet, the GOP will not look into this. Now, I have seen an article that says that the GOP in a 1982 settlement 
uh, consent decree said that they would not contest voter fraud. Well, if that is the case, why would anyone ever back the GOP, a party that has given up its right to contest cheating from the other side? Issue number one. Issue number two. Why would we back a party that does not have the stones to get in there and look at this issue beforehand? And three, why would we back a party that does not have the stones to have its debates not be handled by liberals on every single, every single one of the uh, debates was handled by a liberal moderator? And finally, where are the American people standing up to this, pro, uh, this absolutely contemptible liberal media? Now, we talked about this about a year ago on your show, Operation Slam. Well, guess what? It is back, and it's back with a vengeance. People on Twitter are mad enough that they're actually taking it to MSNBC right now, and we have got, uh, we've got Procter & Gamble worried. We've got them worried. You should see the notes that they're sending back to people. First, they were arrogant. We will advertise wherever we want. Now they're sending coupons to people, and now they're saying, we are reviewing our advertising and we'll get back to you. Well, I know the people at P&G, they're fine folks, they work hard, but unless we are willing to go to the mat, we're going to lose. I mean, that's really what I'm trying to, you know, get yeah. into this conversation. We have two options. We can win or lose. There's no other option. If they win, we lose. So either we can win or lose. I am to the point that I do not believe anything that a Democrat says and, and very little of what a Republican says. Uh, I know that if we start a third party, we'll pay a price. But I think if we get a third party started by the next presidential election, we could make a difference. Uh, that's don't my Don't forget thought. that the uh, GOP grew out of the failure of the Whigs. Well, that was, yeah, before Lincoln. Yep. All right. Let's, well, I don't spend too much time on this, but let's talk a bit about, uh, and we can all be called racist. Uh, and, and by the way, folks, if you want to call me a racist, uh, let me give you my true feelings. Kiss my Obama, okay? Uh, <laughs> uh, Jamie Foxx, an intellectual giant, if ever there was one, has issued a statement, our Lord and Savior, Barack Obama. You have the vast majority of the black community, 93%, many of whom, not many, but some of whom are my own family, as I'm in an integrated marriage and have been for 40 years, uh, that say no matter that we're starving to death, it's Barack Obama because he's half black. I don't know what the other half is. I don't, I don't know what the other half is. But th the fact is you now have black saying uh, he's our guy and it's our time and therefore whites, you will pay. Well, this is one white guy saying uh, I'm not going to pay. In fact, if you come to my house and try to take something, I will shoot you until you're dead. That's a promise. So best stay off of my property. I'd like to see every American, black or white, or yellow or brown or red or whatever other colors there are, uh, in a position that you own stuff and you're willing to protect it. Because we have a lot of people, Romney, they quoted one that's 47%. I think he's low. I think more than half the people in this country do nothing, take everything, steal, and, are, and feel good about it. And they think they have a right to live the way they want to live, but no obligation to do anything for it at all. And those people need to all be eliminated. Now, you can give a bus ticket, you can give a plane ticket, uh, or you can punch their ticket. I don't care what you do. People that are thieves have no useful place on this earth, in my opinion. Chief, have I broken any rules yet? No, you haven't at all. And, uh, but I just want to add on here that it is going to get serious. It is serious now. And if someone does break into your home or comes to your home and you, you, you do take action, just make sure that you call your lawyer right away. Yeah, yep. say nothing other than my lawyer's name is. Yep, and let me, let me add to that, please. Uh, due to the price of ammunition, if you want to hear a warning shot, make sure you're holding someone in front of you. <laughs> All right. Well, 
you know, I'm just because I'm sensitive, I'm putting a condom on every bullet. So to be safe. All right, this is a, a, a silly story, but it's a very serious story. Dog lovers are making a push to stop debarking surgery. This is becoming very popular where they operate on dogs where they can no longer bark. They can't make noise. Now, those of you that think that that's wrong, I agree with you. But those of you that think that this is being perfected for dogs, you're wrong. This is being perfected for people who are problems for government at any level and all levels, in my humble opinion. Chief? Well, first of all, uh, dogs can be rehabilitated that they don't bark all the time. This is a training issue, and, and it could be a psychological issue, but it, they can be fixed. So watch a dog whisper, find the episode to show you how to do it. Not a big deal. Uh, there's a, also, there's other kind of electronic mechanisms that can keep a dog from barking, so you don't need to cut their vocal cords. It's very cruel and very unusual, and do dogs, dogs bark. That's what they're supposed to do, so they have to bark some, or else they're just going to really be nuts. So, but I do believe you're right. As soon as the liberals find out we could cut their vocal cords, <laughs> all of us conservatives are in big trouble. Well, and I think they would justify it, they would rationalize it, they would glory in it, and they would enjoy it. The only thing good you can say about a liberal is that th that liberal is going to die. The only question is, is it going to be soon enough to keep them from destroying other people's lives? And I'm not suggesting right. anyone do harm to anyone, unless they're trying to do harm to you, of course, and you're protecting yourself. Uh, your thoughts, uh, Greg? I'm an experienced dog owner, and I have quite a menagerie, and let's make it very clear. There's absolutely no reason to cut a dog's vocal cords. It is exactly what Steve said. It is cruel. You can stop a dog from barking. If a dog is uncontrollably barking, it is a psychological problem or a training problem. And uh, if you don't know how to handle it, get in touch with me on Twitter, and I'll show you exactly how to deal with it. Uh, there's no question that a lot of the stuff we are starting to look into would seem Orwellian unless you understood the mentality of the people who are in charge here. Van Jones, Barack Obama, these people have absolutely no compunction about using everything out of Hitler's playbook and nothing is off limits. And I tell you, nothing is off limits with these folks. They will do anything. They have followed the playbook to the letter to this point and it is being followed behind the scenes as we speak. Too many leaks are coming out of what they're planning. There are too many unexplained FEMA camps around the country. There is just too much here for people to keep putting their heads in their sand, their fingers in the air, and saying, oh, the Constitution will protect us. We have to protect the Constitution. Well said. Now, uh, of course, Chief Steve was in law enforcement for 35 years or so. Uh, and I don't know if he watched this video, but I did. And I am angry. A police officer in Colorado uh, shot a dog. And there may have been some confusion as to whether the dog was dangerous or not. He was, the police were called just because someone didn't understand that someone was dog sitting. The dog was unrestrained in a garage and wouldn't even come out. They kept calling it out and chasing it out. And finally it came out. Uh, then a dog a control officer, had the dog in uh, a restraining loop, they call it, and while in that loop, uh, a police officer came up and shot, the, the dog had been shot once, but the, a police officer came up while the dog uh, uh, control officer had the dog in control, lady officer, uh, and shot the dog four times and killed it. And the, the dog control officer was visibly upset. I, I think that's one way to say it outraged, angry as hell, and this cop had absolutely no logical, rational, legal, uh, even questionable reason for killing that dog other than he was angry for whatever reason he was angry. Now I'll let Chief uh, comment about it first. Well, it's very simple to me. The First of all, the officer should be fired, and then since the dogs are property, not people, which I would like more something more substantial. But he should be sued personally for the for the injuries that sustained to the family for the for this dog. There are there are you know there are there are emergencies and there are non-emergencies. And so when you have people there that can handle a dog like that, and there's dogs everywhere. So once someone of, of expertise can handle the dog, you just stand back and let them handle it. And then when that's taken care of, then you take a, going about your police business. But an officer to do this 
It, it, it just really shows that they're in a position they should not be in. They should be removed of their duties and their powers and then sued for their damages. And the fact is that the, the rounds he fired at this dog, it wasn't like the dog was against the wall. There were people in the line of fire. That, that, that there were people that were endangered because of, of, of a round. I don't know what, whether it was a, a 40 or a 38 or what he was firing, but it went right through the animal and, and could have hit some of the people that were in the line of fire. And that's, right? happened, that's happened before. It happened here several years ago in Indianapolis when an, an officer fired a shotgun and the pellet uh, ricocheted and hit, hit a girl and killed her. He was killing the dog and, and the pellet from the shotgun ricocheted in, into a garage and killed a young girl. So there are a lot of risks involved when you fire a weapon, but, but it should be a, a last resort. A really, and you know, unless a dog is attacking you, I mean, physically you're really coming at you and biting at your leg, that's the only aggressive dog. Dogs bark a lot, they growl a lot, mostly because they're scared. And if it's hiding in a garage somewhere, it's not aggressive, it's not coming out and biting you, it's scared, it needs somebody to go in there that knows what they're doing to get it out. And the fact is the dog wasn't even barking at the time he was shot? That's possible. Uh, you know, dogs, dogs bark and don't bark for lots of reasons. But what I'm saying is, unless a dog is running at you and trying to bite you, that's an aggressive dog. If it's not doing that, it's not aggressive. Well, Greg, you want to comment? Uh, it was absolutely unnecessary to kill this particular dog. I saw the video. The dog was uh, actually exhibiting fear behavior, uh, not threat behavior. And um, dogs are very, very body language type animals. The bark is not the true indication of what the dog is doing, no more than it is really in people. Our voices are really not true indications of what we're doing. 90% of communications in dogs and people is nonverbal. And if you look at, if you know anything about dogs and you look at that video, the dog is exhibiting fear behavior, not threat behavior. The dog wasn't snarling. The dog wasn't baring his teeth. The dog was trying to hide. Yeah, well, let me just look at the position of the dog's ears. The dog's ears are the primary indication of the and dog's mood. They were down, not The dog's up. ears were indicating fear. Well, uh, uh, Greg, Greg is right. But again, you know, th th those are complicated things for people to learn quickly about do dog body language. And Greg's right that, that they do, that's, that's the key indicator. But again, I'm saying, unless a dog is coming at you, charging you, it's not aggressive. That's, that's the that's bottom right. line. But the thought that the dog was in a restraint handled by a dog control officer there is nothing to, there's no reason for that policeman to even be involved at that point. Absolutely. That's why he's, he's greatly abused his power, and it should be, he should be relieved of that power permanently. Well, we'll see. Maybe we'll find out. We're going to take a break. We'll come back with Major General Jerry Curry. Greg Howard is with us. Uh, former Ch Police Chief Steve Davis and me right here on Talk to Solomon. I like to eat. Do you like to eat? We all do. And usually we run to the grocery store, we run to the convenience store, uh, or we have something in the fridge. But power's been out in parts of this country in the last few weeks. Uh, we don't know what's going to come down the pike economically. Smart people are putting in food. Alpine Air Gourmet Reserves is a line of foods that you can put away that will last for a very long time. You know, they say eat what you store and store what you eat. This is great tasting stuff, healthy for you, a full line. You go to our website, cpnlive.com, and click on the button for Alpine Air Gourmet Reserves and see all the different things we have. This is good tasting food. It's reasonably priced. It will last. And it's worth its weight in gold if a problem arises. I know you don't think there's going to be anything that goes wrong. Actually, you do. This is smart. This is smart insurance. This is smart preparation. This is smart thinking. You have kids. You have a spouse. You have parents. You have dependents. Uh, you have an appetite. All those things can be addressed by a, a, a frugal but smart investment in Alpine Air Gourmet Reserves. Try them out. You will be tickled to death with the taste of them. You know what? In many cases, people start to eat this, and they think, heck, this tastes better and costs less then what you're going to the grocery store to buy? CPNLive.com. Check it out. One. 
Hey, my name is Stan Solomon, and you know if I have something to say, I'll say it. And I'll only tell you the truth because I'm a Republican, not a Democrat. Democrats always lie. Republicans only lie half the time. I don't lie at all. This is the fuel mule. It's an extraordinary product that was developed by a friend of mine, an engineer, and it increases the fuel mileage on your vehicle. If you have a combustion engine, this will increase your mileage by 10 to 20 percent. It bolts around your fuel line. You can install it yourself or have your mechanic do it. It is an extraordinary item and it flat works. I've been using it for more than 10 years. It's increased my mileage on every vehicle I put it on. And by the way, it will last forever. You can get rid of your vehicle. Just take it off and put on the next one. Go to cpnlive.com. You'll have more information there. You can order it right there. We absolutely guarantee you'll be satisfied. The Fuel Mule. It's a way to kick down your cost of fuel and kick up your mileage. Don't you love the name? I thought of it. The Fuel Mule. Let me ask you a question. Do you like being sick? I have in my hand an incredible product. It's called TR10 Super Colloidal Silver. TR10 stands for a trace to the negative 10th power. The particles in this silver product are six to eight angstroms, six to eight ten billionths of a meter. Now listen to me. Silver has been the magic bullet for all of human existence. The Egyptians used silver instruments. We use silverware. They put silver in your teeth because nothing can grow on silver. Silver will kill anything but liberalism. I'm working on that. This product, you go to cpnlive.com, buy one quarter of this product, it will last you for a very long time. Anytime you feel like you've been exposed to something bad, take some of this product, spray it in your mouth, or take a little bit and gargle it, swallow it. It will kill any pathogen. The average antibiotic kills 10 to 20 different pathogens. This product will kill 700 plus. Do yourself a favor, do your family a favor, do your doctor a favor, he's tired of seeing you. Get super colloidal silver, go to cpnlive.com, order the product, it's $29.95 plus shipping, I think it's $39.95 delivered any place in America right to your door, it's worth 10 times that. Check it out, if you're not 100% happy, just return it and we'll give you your money back. Do you like being healthy? I do. In fact, this product, which I've been taking for years now, is absolutely the answer. Now, you may not believe it, but I'm actually 21, plus tax, of course. This product has 146 different healthful nutrients in it, and it's liquid, so it's bioavailable. It tastes great, and it's sugar-free. One ounce of Sonic Life each day will help you to maintain and enhance your health. It's the kind of a gift, well, that you'll thank your mom for, your husband for, your wife for, your kids for. Whoever you give it to, they're going to say thank you. And you are going to enjoy the benefits of having all the vitamins, all the minerals, all the nutrients your body needs in one very reasonably priced product. Just go to cpnlive.com and everything's right there. You'll be able to read all the ingredients. The price is right there, a flat price delivered to your door anywhere in the United States of America. Sonic Life is a gift, a great gift. Give it to yourself. I do.